The Oligocene was the last epoch of the Paleogene. At this time, the Earth experienced a cooler climate than in the previous Paleocene and Eocene epochs. A huge ice sheet formed over the South Pole. To form such a cover, nature required huge amounts of seawater. Because of such changes on the planet, the water level in the world's oceans began to drop rapidly and the land area increased significantly. The cooling led to the fact that tropical forests were displaced by forests that preferred cooler climates and steppes, which occupied vast areas of the planet. Climate change has had a significant impact on the planet's ecosystems and biodiversity. During this period, there were several significant changes in the Earth's climate. First, India moved closer to the equator, resulting in increased rainfall and higher temperatures. This led to the development of tropical forests and increased biodiversity in the region. Second, Australia and Antarctica finally parted, leading to a change in ocean circulation and climate change in both regions. Third, South America became an isolated island, allowing unique animal species such as sloths and armadillos to evolve. Mollusks. This is one of the most diverse classes of animals on Earth, comprising more than 130,000 species. These creatures live in virtually all habitats, from the depths of the sea to freshwater. In the Oligocene, about 34 million years ago, mollusks continued to evolve and adapt to new environments. Gastropods became the dominant genus. Helix and pupilla snails appeared. Cephalopod mollusks also continued to evolve, but the number of these creatures decreased. Among the bivalves, Teradina appeared. Fishes continued to evolve in the Oligocene and the Rafin fishes remained dominant. The largest of the Rayfishes is the swordfish. Swordfish appear among this order. In the second place, catfish and the detachment lampreforms. In this period, new fish species such as mullet, needlefish and smelt appeared. In addition, Macrurus, a deep-sea cod, appeared. Scorpions and echinoderms also evolved and became an integral part of the world's oceans. In the Paleocene, Carcharodon appeared. This extinct shark was one of the largest representatives of the family Carcharinidae. At present, only fossil remains are known, however, from them we can conclude that Carcharodon were large predators, reaching 18 meters in length. Megalodons. These giants were extinct marine predatory sharks. The predators lived during the Paleogene period and reached sizes up to 25 meters long and 30 tons of weight. Megalodons preyed on large marine animals such as whales, dolphins, and sea turtles. During the Oligocene period, the giant shark or Ceterinus maximus appeared. And this predator has survived to the present day. Ceterinus maximus has a massive body with a short and wide snout that is used to grab prey. This shark can reach a length of up to 6 meters and a weight of up to 7 tons. The predator feeds on fish, squid, and other marine animals. Simnodon. This is a species of raffin fish from the family Ciliarinidae of the order of sharks. These fish are distributed in the Atlantic and Indian Oceans. They are found at depths of 110 to 180 meters. The maximum recorded size of 91 centimeters. They feed on small fish, squid, crustaceans, and cephalopods. Reproduce by egg-laying. Hemipristis. 
These are ray-finned fishes in the family Hemipriididae of the Scutosauridae. These creatures are distributed in all tropical and subtropical regions of the world's oceans. Hemipristus are found both at depths of up to 1,000 meters and near the surface. The maximum recorded size of these fish is 2 meters. These sharks feed predominantly on smaller fish. Mantabirostris belongs to the family Niliobatidae of the tailfin division. These rays inhabit the tropical waters of the Indo-Pacific region. The maximum recorded length is 3 meters. These stingrays have a very distinctive body and head shape that can be mistaken for the head of a shark. Miliobatidae have a body shape that allows them to camouflage among coral reefs. Yet these animals are quite large and have a high swimming speed. Reproduction in stingrays occurs by egg laying. The diet of these stingrays consists mainly of small fish, as well as shrimp and squid. The spread of steps to ever larger areas of land has led to a rapid increase in the number of herbivorous animals. During the Oligocene epoch, new species of mammals, including rhinoceroses, appeared. In addition to rhinoceroses, the first true pigs and buffalo appeared in the Oligocene. Finally, the first deer appear in the Oligocene. Animals with unusual digestive systems appeared that allowed them to digest plant food efficiently. One such animal was phytophage. This is an animal that feeds exclusively on plant food. Nature began to reward animals with what is known as a ruminant stomach that could digest exclusively plant food. During that era, the ancient camel poebrotherium lived on Earth and was one of the earliest ruminants. At the end of the Oligocene, about 25 million years ago, a new group of plants appeared on Earth. They were grasses. What makes these plants unique is that, unlike all flowering plants, new leaves grow not at the top of the stem but at the base. As a result, if grazing animals eat the old leaves, new leaves quickly grow in that place. Thus, by the time the next herd arrives, the fields are ripe with a new and hearty lunch. This process of constant renewal of food resources means that the grassy plains can feed large herds of herbivorous animals. From this time onward, evolution produced a great variety of herbivores, and since herbivores proved to be easy prey on the open plains, these animals were followed by a host of new predators. By the end of the Oligocene, the first true cats and dogs had appeared on the planet. In South America, the Oligocene saw rapid development of mammals. During this period, new species appeared that were different from animals found in other parts of the world. One of the most interesting facts is that many of these animals had unusual traits that helped them survive in the harsh conditions of South America. For example, some of the animals had long tails that were used for balancing on trees, as well as large ears that helped them hear sounds in the forest. Another example. Ancient Pyrotheria resembled an early elephant with its half-trunk and chiseled tusks. And Thylacosmolus was a large marsupial animal that looked like a saber-toothed cat. The animal possessed long, curved fangs and powerful claws. In ancient South America, there were many incomplete toothed mammals such as anteaters, armadillos, and sloths. These animals had a number of unique features that helped the animals survive in the jungles of South America. For example, anteaters had a long trunk that they used to find food. And armadillos were covered in thick armor that protected them from predators. Sloths, on the other hand, were slow and heavy animals that spent most of their time in trees. These are the Oreodonts, a family of Oligocene mammals. 
These herbivores fed on the leaves and shoots of trees. Among the Oreodonts was the subfamily Leptokenianae. It included small animals that looked like dwarf donkeys. These animals had short legs and lived in deserts. Camelidae is a family of calluses that lived in the Oligocene. The animals were similar to modern camels and had a long neck and hump. However, unlike modern camels, these creatures did not live in deserts but in prairies and occupied the ecological niche of antelopes. Camelids weighed between 50 and 520 kilograms. Family Protoceratidae. This is evolution's attempt to create a fast-moving antelope on the genetic basis of the camel. These true mutants had horns not only on their heads but also on their snouts, making these creatures look like rhinoceroses. The Cenotherium ungulate hare was one of the strangest calloused animals that lived in the Oligocene. Anthracotheriidae are another representative of the Eocene parnopods. These are the distant ancestors of modern hippos. But while Anthracotheriidae was the size of a normal hippo, Bothriogenes and Elomerix were less than a meter and a half long. The family Entelodontidae, which separated from the general lineage of pigs as early as the Eocene, was finally formed. These very unsympathetic boars were over 2 meters tall and weighed over 400 kilograms. Entelodontidae were predators and hunted primitive camels as well as small rhinoceroses. In the Oligocene there was a great variety of small animals that we rarely mention. The Parnopods Hypertridulidae. These small animals not more than 9 kilograms lived in the jungle and fed on vegetables and fruits. We can't fail to mention a strange creature called Leptomerix. It was a small deer-like ruminant with a very slender body. During the transition from the Eocene to the Oligocene, the ancient whales became extinct, and those that remained finally lost their hind limbs and divided into two modern suborders, toothed and mustached whales. Toothed whales in the Eocene were as small as two and a half meters and were almost indistinguishable from modern dolphins. The first cetacean to master echolocation in the late Oligocene was Kentriodon. Kentriodon lived in the late Oligocene about 25 million years ago. This small representative was the first cetacean to master echolocation, which allowed the animal to better navigate in the water and avoid predators. Mustached whales were larger than toothed whales in the Oligocene, but differed from the former only in minor details of anatomy and nutrition. Instead of whale whiskers, mustached whales had normal teeth and subsistence consisted of fish. Echolocation ancient mustached whales have not yet mastered. The canine family, which originated in the Eocene, became prosperous in the Oligocene. Hesperociana. These were small, up to 36 kilograms in weight, fast-footed predators like foxes and jackals. Then there were barophagus, which were even smaller. Just under 2 kilograms in weight. The largest family of the superfamily was the Amphicyonidae, which were large and stocky animals. Amphicyonidae had powerful jaws and sharp teeth, which allowed them to hunt large prey such as deer and mammoths. Cynodictus were the smallest members of the superfamily Arctoidea and lived in burrows. Predators preyed on small rodents and shrews using their sharp teeth and claws. In the Oligocene, among the Arctoidea bears, the first species appeared that was more cat-like than bear-like. This was Ursavus gidlii. This is due to the fact that at that time there were significant changes in the environment and some species were adapting to the new conditions. Ursavus gidlii was one such species that became more agile and fast-moving to better adapt to its new environment. 
In addition, its appearance may have been related to the fact that it lived in forests where there were many trees and dense vegetation that could create shade and camouflage it from predators. At this time, during the Oligocene epoch, two new groups of animals evolved from the general lineage of dog-like animals, which was a group of mammals. These were the martens and the pinnipeds. The quals, in particular, were the most advanced evolutionarily and became the ancestors of many modern mammals such as minks, sables, and ferrets. Pinnipeds, on the other hand, are a group of animals including ducks, geese, gulls, and other waterfowl that evolved from a common ancestor with dogs. 28 million years ago, the first true cats appeared, which were small arboreal predators. The first cats lived in forests and fed on small animals. The mantle and the lynx are direct descendants of these animals. Now we will tell about Oligocene ungulates. Among all the few ungulates, the most outstanding animal is worth telling about. It was Indracotherium. Another name for the animal is Paraceratherium. It was a megahorse, 8 meters long, 5 and a half meters high at the withers. That's almost an elephant and a half. And weighing up to 20 tons. That's four elephants. It was the largest land mammal that ever existed. In fact, it was the mammalian equivalent of the Jurassic Brachiosaurus. But this animal had a much easier life than Brachiosaurus. There were simply no predators to stop Indracotherium's living. Indracotheriums ate a soft, plant-based diet. When the climate became arid, these giants died out from lack of food. In North America, true horses gradually evolved. These were descendants of the Orohippus, Mesohippus. The horses were small, up to 55 kilograms. The animals had three toes on each foot, the middle toes being larger and longer than the lateral toes. This allowed ancient horses to run fast on hard ground. The small, soft hooves of the Ohippus adapted to soft, swampy soils, becoming a true hoof. Mesohippus were already the size of a modern wolf. The animals inhabited the Oligocene steppes in large herds. The brain of Mesohippus was already about the size of a modern horse. After the Mesohippus came the Merisippus. These were horses the size of donkeys. Merisippus had cement on their teeth. Some rhinoceroses in the Oligocene began to grow horns on their snouts. Another interesting animal lived in the Oligocene, Calicotherium. It was an unfortunate copy of the Cretaceous Therizinosaurus on a different genetic base. These beasts used their long arms to bend tree branches and eat leaves. The hooves on the hands and feet of Calicotherium had turned back into claws. Brontops was the last of the Brontotherians. And Metaminodon was the Hippopotamus ungulate counterpart. The modern taper emerged, unchanged from that time. Brachypus sideros. An oligocene bat that was very similar to modern bats. Numerous insect eaters, particularly prehistoric hedgehogs, were found at that time. The last simulests were living out their days. The number and diversity of primates declined markedly in the Oligocene. This was because there was less jungle. Some monkeys became accustomed to hanging under branches on their hands rather than running on all fours. These primates gradually became humanoid. They were small monkeys, weighing between 1, 5 and 7 kilograms. These creatures had brains no bigger than those of other Oligocene apes. The first hairs appeared. Pika. In dense forests lived the first true hair called Paleologus. Paleologus did not yet know how to jump and gallop, 
but hid from predators in burrows like marmots. Placental Mammals Afrotherians the largest group of Afrotherians. These are the Proboscideans. Many members of the Proboscideans have finally come to resemble modern elephants. Eritreus is an almost normal elephant about the size of a cow. Baratherium was the size of an Indian elephant, but evolved toward hippopotamuses. Baratherium's tusks and trunk shortened almost to the point of being indistinguishable. The famous genus Mastodon appeared. The second great group of Oligocene Afrotherians, these are the now extinct Desmostility. The animals were a bit like herbivorous sea lions. Also included in the Oligocene Afrotherians are the Daemons, Cyrenians, and the nose like Arsinotherium. Pyrotherians and Astropotherians were something like small hippopotamuses. Pachyrucos was the South American equivalent of the rabbit. Rhynchopus was the South American equivalent of a pony. And Stromachenia was an animal that looked like an unfinished giraffe. It's worth looking at the Oligocene partially toothed animals. These were sloths and armadillos. A special place in the evolutionary chain was occupied by marsupials. The largest group of Oligocene marsupials are representatives of the bipedal marsupials. In the modern world, this group includes kangaroos and wombats. In the Oligocene, the bipedal marsupials were represented by the small kangaroo-like predator Echeltodeta. Also representing the top of the Oligocene food chain was the marsupial lion. It was one of the largest marsupial predators of all time. The marsupial lion reached up to 160 kilograms. An interesting feature of the animal was its strong and agile forelimbs with opposable thumbs. Apparently, the marsupial lion grabbed prey not with its teeth, but with its hands. In the Oligocene, the modern family of predatory marsupials was formed. The first representatives of this period were small, like foxes and small dogs. Also in the Oligocene, the first bandicoots appeared. These were large marsupial rats that jumped like kangaroos. Monotremes are still represented only by platypuses. Echidnas have not yet appeared. Zoropsids of the Oligocene. Pelagornithids, huge toothy albatrosses with wingspans up to 6 meters. Foraracos. Flightless birds of prey that have occupied an empty niche of large predator in South America. The representative of Fororacos parafasornis reached 2 meters in height and weighed up to 110 kilograms. But most other representatives of Fororacos had much smaller sizes. For example, Solopterus weighed only 7 kilograms. The first modern genus appeared in the stork family. It was the night heron. Flamingos differed little from their modern representatives. Penguins were larger than they are today. Up to one and a half meters in height and weighed up to 90 kilograms. Ancient penguins had long, thin beaks like herons. Also in the Oligocene, the first modern genus of hawks, buzzards, and the first hummingbirds appeared. Some Oligocene crocodiles, such as the 5-meter-long Australian Quincana, did not hide in water bodies, but ran briskly on land. Gaviolosuchus was the largest of the Oligocene crocodiles, reaching lengths of almost 10 meters. Most Oligocene turtles already resemble modern turtles. But the Australian Myelanias resembled an armored horned beast with a long ossified tail, similar to the Mesozoic Ankylosaurs. Among the scaly reptiles of the Oligocene, several may be mentioned. These are the large snake Urlunger, which reached 6 meters in length, and the spindle lizard Peltosaurus. The aquatic lizards Choristodega continued to exist. The Oligocene amphibians are still the same frogs, salamanders, newts, and worms. 
At the end of the Oligocene, the Earth suddenly experienced global warming, so much so that the Antarctic glacier almost melted. Thank you for watching this episode to the end. Give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. And also do not forget to click on the bell to not miss new and interesting releases from the channel Real Unreal.